Simon and Horseshoester Audio presents Yellowstone, the series, Minisodes, by Anansi. This episode, Staying Tuned. Busy Bee, you turn off that television and come to dinner, Warning Dew called from the kitchen. The yellow filly didn't get up, but instead moaned back, But Mom, the news is about to start! She returned her attention to the screen, brushing her unkept mane out of her eyes. Morning Dew's sigh was audible, even from the kitchen. <sighs> Ten minutes, Busy Bee! Then you will join the rest of your family at the table! Okay, sheesh! Whatever program was on previously ended and was soon replaced by an official-looking white and black earth pony wearing a red tie, sitting at a desk with dramatic music playing in the background. Busy Bee let loose a tiny squeeze of excitement as she nuzzled the silver disc that hung by a red ribbon around her neck before returning her gaze to the screen. This is Print and Press with your West Coast News. Tonight's top story, Chaos and New Folsom. Busy Bee gasped at the picture that appeared on the screen. It was of some fancy hotel lobby that had been completely wrecked. This morning at approximately 11 o'clock, members of the criminal organization known as the HLF, or Human Liberation Front, launched an attack on the home self-made billionaire, John Norris. They showed a picture of a disheveled and irritable man who had definitely not seen enough sunlight. She narrowed her eyes. Oh, ew, he looks gross. And his son, Azure Wind. A picture of a small, timid-looking blue pegasus appeared next to the man's photo. A meep from behind Busy Bee alerted her to the presence of her younger sister, Mary Gold. Turning to smile at her sister, Busy Bee waved to the small white and gold filly. Come on, Mary! Her sister quickly nestled close to her and watched the continuing news, nervously smiling at the photo of the blue small pegasus. But what is most shocking is that the attack was stopped by a man who allegedly works for the mysterious human organization known only as The Agency, and a powerful unicorn that is a member of the Elite Equestrian Guard, which has never been reported to even exist until today. Mary Gold and Busy Bee exchanged excited looks. Mary Gold prodded her sister's side and asked, Do you think it's Miss Twilight and... Shh! Unfortunately, as is the case with such incidents, the President of the United States and Celestia herself have forbid revealing any names or pictures of the individuals in order to protect the identities of the heroic pair. However, an eyewitness account adds to the grisly scene as Sweetie Pop, the receptionist during the attack, recounts the events that took place. The screen cut to a peach-colored mare with strawberry mane sitting behind the ruins of what must have been a beautiful desk before it was destroyed. So first there was this extremely rude postman that said he had a package from Mr. Norris. And then a guy in one of those leather Indiana Jones kind of hats and coat shows up saying he's Mr. Norris. Busy Bee's cheeks began to flush as her heartbeat quickened. Then a freaking van drives through the front window, and all these HLF goons jump out and start shooting up the place. And here I am, behind the desk, praying to Celestia not to die. And this cowboy guy and unicorn mare he's with are like, I don't know, exchanging playful banter or something, when the cowboy guy throws some dynamite at him. The mare waves her hooves around as she spoke, acting out the minor actions that were occurring in her story, much to the amusement of the fillies. And then the HLF are all dead, except for this one guy the unicorn tries to save for some reason. The mare's face suddenly looked off in the distance as she recalled what was happening next. And then the spider came. Celestia, preserve me, that thing was as big as a horse. Like one of them uh, shire horses you look up on the internet when you... you know... Anyway, Big Spider, Cowboy shoots it a lot, Unicorn casts some spell that makes her into some beefy stallion. She stabs the thing with her horn, and then the Cowboy throws another stick of dynamite into the spider's guts, and then BOOM! Busy Bee and Mary Gold cheered in excitement, but quickly silenced themselves as the news reporter started to speak again. Truly fantastic stuff. In a related story, the HLF member that was spared in the attack has revealed the locations of several key stockpiles in the Midwestern territories. Six tribe rangers moved quickly. What? 
cried the Phillies as the TV suddenly went dead. Looking behind them, they saw the stern visage of their mother, TV remote under hoof. Come on, girls, that was your ten minutes. I won't have you two becoming couch potatoes, because then I'd have to eat you. Marigold gasped as she quickly hopped over to Morning Dew and nuzzled her mother's legs. You wouldn't really eat us if we turned into potatoes, would you? She asked, completely serious. Morning Dew nuzzled her daughter's neck and affectionately cooed. No, my little flower, I don't think I would. Even as a potato, you'd be too cute to eat. Now, hurry along to dinner. Your father ain't the kind to not eat food if there's no pony there to claim it. Morning Dew and Mary Gold trotted off to the kitchen merrily, giggling about just how cute Mary Gold would be as a potato. Busy Bee lingered behind them for a bit, and once they were out of sight, she looked at the silver medallion that hung from her neck. She lovingly eyed the image of a hawk that was carved into it. Any time now, Bee, called her mother. She gave the disc a quick kiss and pressed it against her chest before sighing and joining her family. This has been a Simon and Horse Schuster production of Stay Tuned. Written by Anansi. Read by Victor Frost. For this story and more like it, go to www.equestriadaily.com and search for The Conversion Bureau. Thank you for listening.